oh hello there this is kind of an impromptu video literally today i was just thinking about the prince award i started reading more about it looking at the whole backlist of prince winners and honorees i just started getting really excited about all of the titles i'm kind of inclined to just like read all of them now so i thought it would be kind of fun to just talk about the michael l prince award especially if i actually go ahead and like start reading a bunch of prince winners it will make a little bit more sense if i kind of talk to you guys about how i was just thinking about it and how this isn't really coming out of nowhere well it kind of is but you'll at least have a little bit of a heads up as to my future reading plans for those who are unaware the prince award is a literary award for young adult literature. It is the Michael L. Prince Award. It is named after a man who was a high school librarian and just really dedicated to his life to finding books for teens that really inspired them and encouraged them to read. He was a big proponent of the idea that there's a book out there for everybody. I know that I have mentioned multiple times on this channel that I am a big fan of the Prince Award. I just find that all the books that have been honored throughout the past by the Prince Award just really tend to be books that I really love and I just really trust it as a guide to book recommendations. It's the only literary award that I really care about and I really follow. Today we're just gonna look at all of the books that have been honored by the Prince Award and see which ones I've read, what I rated them, and kind of talk about which ones I own, which ones I'm planning to read, which is most of them. <laughs> so every year the Prince Award has like one winner and then up to four honorees. So like there's one that gets like the gold medal every year and then up to four books every year that get like the silver award. Really the only criteria to get a Prince Award is to be a book written for young adults ages 12 to 18. It can be fiction, nonfiction, graphic novels, poetry. It usually I think tends to be normal fiction but I love that it's not limited to that. This award just strives to honor literary merit. It is about literary depth and substance, be it through characters, writing, themes, style, story, originality, etc. Most Prince books tend to be unique and interesting and really stylistically always draw me in. So yeah, if you haven't heard of this award before, you are about to hear all of the books that have ever gotten this award. So buckle up. I have written down all of the Prince winners throughout the years and I have taken the liberty of going to my library's website and finding out which ones are available to me on audiobook, which ones are available on ebook, which ones aren't available to me at all. Good news! most of them are on audio from my libraries. So I'm just in the Prince mood. I want to read them all. So we'll see if this happens. This isn't like an official like TBR video or like an official goal or anything, but just me sharing something that I'm excited about. So let's go over all the Prince winners from the past. Okay, so for 2019, it was actually the 20th year that the Prince had been going. So it was kind of a monumental year for the award and the 2019 award honors books published in 2018. The winner of the 2019 award was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This of course is a book that has gotten so much buzz and so much hype and just has been recommended to me a million times. I definitely want to read this one. It is available to me on audiobook, so I should be getting to it anytime now. I and mean, I've heard that the audiobook of this is amazing. The author narrates it, that it is a book I think told through slam poetry, and I, I love that this is like written in verse. I've just heard the most incredible things about it. The honorees from 2019 are Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. Haven't heard of this one, but it is available to me on audio, so I'll be getting to it. I, Claudia by Mary McCoy, which I also have not heard of. My library doesn't have it on audio. It does have it on ebook, but how likely is that? Not super likely. Now it's kind of on my radar, at least. A Heart in a Body in the World by Deb Coletti, which my library does have an audio and I have been meaning to get to for a long time. 
not that long because obviously these books came out in 2018, but I have been meaning to get to this book. I have also heard really good things about this one. Moving into 2018, the winner of the 2018 Prince Award was We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, which is of course one of my favorite books of all time. Here, it's the beautiful shiny gold P sticker. So I have read this one and I gave this five out of five stars. Those of you who know me know that 5 out of 5 is a rare rating for me, but it will not seem like it in this video because you will be seeing a lot of 5 star ratings for me in books that I have read off of the Prince Award list, which is why I'm just getting so excited about this because looking at this list of like all of the books that I've read, I don't think I've found like a list of books that has had like as high of a concentration of five star ratings for me. So I just feel like all the rest of the books just are very promising because of that. The 2018 honorees include The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I have also read this book and I did not give it five stars, but I really liked it. Love this book. I gave it four out of five stars. Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. I have not read this one, but this is another one that I have been meaning to read. I really like Jason Reynolds and I want to read all of his books, to be honest. So this is definitely on my list. It is on audio from my library. We'll be getting to this one. Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Another one that has been super highly hyped. I have never read Lainey Taylor before. I feel like I'm not as into like her level of high fantasy, but I have been kind of tempted by this book. My library does have it on audio and so I will be reading it. I gotta do it for the prince. And then the last honoree from 2018 is Vincent and Theo, the Van Gogh brothers by Deborah Heiligman. I've never heard of this book, but it appears to be about Vincent Van Gogh, which is very interesting. And my library does have it on audio, so I'll be reading it. <laughs> on to 2017. The winner of the 2017 Prince Award was actually a book that I own, and it is book three in the March trilogy. So the March trilogy is a series of nonfiction graphic novels, and it is John Lewis telling his personal story about his experiences with the civil rights movement. Obviously, this is one that I have also been meaning to read. I own all three of these graphic novels in this beautiful box set. I will have to read the first two before getting to the third one, which is the actual winner of the award. But yeah, I have been wanting to read these for a long time. As for the honorees for 2017, Asking For It by Louise O'Neill, another one I have been meaning to read, heard great things about. It is on audio from my library. I will be getting to it. Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Another book that looks really interesting. I have heard great things about, been wanting to read it. My library does not have it on audio, so I'm not sure when I'll be getting around to this one. It looks fascinating and I do really wanna read this book. One that I haven't heard of, The Passion of Dulce by Julie Berry. Don't know anything about this book, but my library does have it on audio, so I'll be reading it. And then, a book that I actually have read, The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, which I didn't actually love. I gave this book three stars. I feel like my personal enjoyment of it was even maybe a little bit lower than that, but I recognize that there were really great aspects of this book. I feel like this might be my least favorite Prince book actually on the whole list. But even then I didn't hate this book and I truly do understand why this was honored. It just was not for me. On to 2016, the winner of the Prince Award is a book that I recently read and reviewed, Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. I didn't absolutely love this book, but I did like it. I understand why people really would rave about this one. I gave this 3.5 stars. And then there were only two books that were honored in the year of 2016. So we have Out of Darkness by Ashley Hope Perez, which I have actually checked out on audio from my library before and I returned it, I never got around to it, but it's one that I have been meaning to read. And then the other one is The Ghosts of Heaven by Marcus Sedgwick, which my library doesn't have an audio, but I did notice in looking at all these titles that Marcus Sedgwick, I think is probably the most highly awarded author of the Prince Award. And I'm very intrigued because I honestly like, 
I haven't really heard of him before. I don't really know anything about him, but I think he's on this list three times. So I definitely need to keep him on my radar. Moving on to 2015, the winner of the award was I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This is a YA contemporary that I feel like everybody has read and loved and I just haven't read it. And for some reason, I feel like I'm not gonna like it. I don't know why, I don't really know what I'm basing this off of, but I just feel like I'm not gonna like this one. If my library had it on audio, I probably would have read it by now just to know what it's all about, but only the ebook is available to me and I just like have never picked it up. I have read most of the honorees of this year though. The only one I hadn't read was The Carnival at Bray by Jesse Ann Foley, and I don't know anything about this book. My library has it as an ebook. I don't know if I'm gonna be getting around to this one, but I haven't heard of it. And then the other three books that were honored in this year, I have read all three of them. So they were And We Stay by Jenny Hubbard, which is one of my favorite books. I gave this five out of five stars. Absolutely loved this. Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith, which is a very weird book, but it is experimental and out there and I definitely understand and respect why it was honored with this award. I think I did give that book three stars though. I had some mixed feelings about it. And then the last honored book was a graphic novel, This One Summer by Mariko and Jillian Tamaki. This is a really beautiful graphic novel. I think I gave this one three stars as well, but I feel like in retrospect I like it a little bit more. I was just kind of confused about it when I finished it. It's definitely one that I want to reread and see if I like it a little bit better. It's a very slice of life graphic novel, but it has some really interesting themes in it. Moving on to 2014, the winner was another Marcus Sedgwick book, Midwinter Blood, which my library has on audio and I'm very excited to pick it up and see what the Marcus Sedgwick hype is about. The honorees for this year include Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, which I have read. I gave this three stars. There are aspects of this book that I liked. Honestly, I don't think this book probably should have been honored with the Prince Award. There are some problematic elements to it. I think that they were probably overlooked. So this is, in my opinion, a little bit of a misstep of the Prince Award. I am willing to admit that they make some mistakes. And then the other three honorees from this year, I haven't really read or know much about any of them, and they are Maggot Moon by Sally Gardner and Kingdom of Little Wounds by Suzanne Cockle. My library has those on ebook, but not audio, so I'm not Totally sure if I'll be getting to them soon, but it does have Navigating Early by Claire Vanderpool on audiobook, so I'm hoping to get to that one. Moving on to 2013, the winner of the award in 2013 was In Darkness by Nick Lake. I'm not familiar with this book. I don't have access to the audiobook, so sadly we'll probably not be getting to this one soon. One of the honored books of this year, though, is one of my favorite books of all time, and it is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin O'Leary Sines, and I love this book so much. So yeah, this one is another five out of five stars. Out of the remaining honored books from that year, I do own one of them, Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine. I have not read this, don't have access to the audio unfortunately, but I do own it. It's a book that obviously I have been wanting to read. Dodger by Terry Pratchett. I don't think I've ever read Terry Pratchett. I've just been afraid to like dive into that world, but he's an author that I'm very familiar with. And I don't think this is the only book of his that has gotten a Prince Honoree. I'm pretty sure he comes back um, later on this list. And then the last one for this year was The White Bicycle by Beverly Brenna, which I've never heard of and my library does not even have an ebook copy of it, doesn't have an audiobook copy of it. I don't know where to get this book. I've never heard of it before. Moving into 2012, the winner of the Prince Award is a book that I have not read but I do own and would like to read and it is Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley. Don't have access to the audiobook version of this though, so I'm just gonna have to force myself to read this physical copy that I own torture myself. <laughs> I have read two of the honored books from this year, and the ones that I've read are The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter, which is, of course, Maggie Steve Otter's most underappreciated work, my favorite of her books. I gave this book five out of five stars. 
loved it. And then the other one that I have read I also own and it's Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler with art by Myra Kalman. This is a cool book because there are illustrations throughout it. I really liked this one. I gave it four out of five stars. I've seen very polarizing things about this book but I personally loved it. I thought it was very intentionally written, had a really strong voice. And then there are two more honorees from this year that I have not read, haven't really heard of or know much about. One is Jasper Jones by Craig Sylvie, which my library does have an audio, so I'll be getting to it. The other one is a book that my library doesn't have an audio, and it is The Returning by Christine Hinwood. Moving on to 2011, the winner of the Prince Award is a book that I own. Don't have access to it on audio, but I do own it and have been wanting to read it. It is Shipbreaker by Paolo Bacigalupi. Of the four honorees from this year, I've read two of them. One of them is Nothing by Jan Teller, which I had such mixed feelings about. Ultimately, I do understand why this book was honored and I can fully support it because this book is so well done and so different. It is just a lot to handle. I think I give this book three stars. Honestly, probably my rating now would be higher just because this is a book that has stuck with me and just like continued to just fester in my brain. It's disturbing, which is why I just have mixed feelings about it because it just really like made me feel some bad things, but it's also like so well done. So it is cool to see it on this list. The other one that I have read is Please Ignore Vera Dietz by A.S. King. I really want to reread this book because it's been so long, but I loved this book when I read it and I gave it five out of five stars. The other two honorees from that year were Stolen by Lucy Christopher, which I have access to on ebook but not audio, and then Revolver by Marcus Sedgwick. Again, he's coming back. But my library doesn't have a copy of this book at all, so don't know when that's gonna happen. All right, moving into 2010, we're like halfway done now. The winner of the Prince Award is a book that I own, and it is Going Bovine by Libba Bray. I have started reading this book a long time ago. I got maybe like a fourth of the way through it. I really liked this book, but I just set it aside and I never picked it up again. So I just need to read this book again. But I really did like what I read of this book. The honored titles from this year, I don't have as much luck with. There's Charles and Emma, The Darwin's Leap of Faith by Deborah Heiligman, who now that I'm saying that out loud, I think that author has popped up on this list before, so one to look out for. And this one is available to me on audio, so I should be getting to it. And I think it's about Charles Darwin. But the other three books, my library doesn't have an audio, so don't know if I'm gonna be reading them anytime soon, but they are Punkzilla by Adam Rapp. I need to like look at my laptop for the names of these other titles. The Tales of the Madman Underground, an historical romance, 1973 by John Barnes, and the Monstrumologist by Rick Yancey. So moving into 2009, the winner was a book that my library doesn't have an audio, but I do own it. And it is Jellico Road by Melina Marchetta. Starting to sound like a broken record. I've been meaning to read this book. <laughs> I also own one of the nominees, which is The Disreputable History of Frankie Landau Banks by E. Lockhart. I love E. Lockhart. I will read anything that she writes. This is one of the E. Lockhart books that I liked a little bit less than her other works, but I have been wanting to reread this. I don't think I got as much out of it as I could the first time I read this, but I still did like this book. I gave this book, I think, 3.5 stars the first time around. Another Terry Pratchett book, Nation, which I do have access to on audio. The Kingdom of Waves by M.T. Anderson. This is the second in a series. The first book is also a Prince Honoree, so I really need to get to this series. It's the Octavian Nothing series. This is the second one, so I'll be reading the first one and this one. I think they both are on audio for my library, and I think I actually have tried to read the first one before. It was so long and I just like didn't have time for it. It's an undertaking of a series that I've been wanting to get to. And then the last honoree from 2009 is Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan, and my library only has an ebook version of this. It looks very fascinating though. 2008 is a little bit of a bust, 
For me personally, my library doesn't have any copy whatsoever of the winner from 2008, which is The White Darkness by Geraldine McCochran. I don't know where to find this book. I don't know anything about it. I have access to ebook versions, but not audiobook versions of three of the four honorees. So there's Dreamquake by Elizabeth Knox, which I think is the second in a series. One Whole and Perfect Day by Judith Clark and then Repossessed by A.M. Jenkins. And the one that I do have access to on audio actually looks really interesting to me and I haven't heard of it and I'm really excited to read this book and it is Your Own Sylvia by Stephanie Hemphill and this is like Sylvia Plath inspired so I'm there. I'm very ready to read this book. The winner from 2007 is a book that I own and have read and it is American Born Chinese by Jean Lu and Yang. This is a really fantastic graphic novel. So a graphic novel won that year, which is very cool. I gave this book 3.5 stars. It is really good though. Would recommend. The first Octavian Nothing book was honored that year. I believe the title of that one is The Pox Party by M.T. Anderson. So I will be getting to that one. Then we have another book that I own and have read. It is An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. I read this before I had a Goodreads account, so I don't really have a rating for this book. I think probably if I had rated this book at the time I read it, it would have been maybe like 3 to 3.5 stars. Not my favorite John Green book. I like this book, but it's on the like lower end. I think if I were to rank his books, it would probably be Looking for Alaska number one, The Fault in Our Stars number two, Turtles All the Way Down number three, then this one, and then Paper Towns. I think those are all the books he's written, at least by himself. Then we have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I think I do have access to this on audio. I mean, this book is so wildly popular. I just have never gotten around to reading it for some reason, but I mean, I've only heard like the most fantastic things about it. And then one book that I don't have access to on audio, which is Surrender by Sonia Hartnett which I don't know anything about. Moving on to 2006, the winner of the Prince Award was my favorite John Green book, which is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Loved this book so much when I was in high school, like one of my favorite books. I don't think I have technically read it since I've had a Goodreads account, so I don't like have an official Goodreads rating for it, but I definitely 100% would have given this book five out of five stars if I had a Goodreads account when I read it. I love this book. Of the honorees for that year, we have another book that I read pre-Goodreads, so I don't have an official rating, but I thousand percent would have given this book five out of five stars because I loved this book when I finished it. It like blew my mind. I was obsessed with it. And it is I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. So John Green and Marcus Zusak, two years in a row for <laughs> them. I really want to reread this book. I loved it so much when I read it for the first time when I was a teenager. And then for this year, we sadly have some books I don't really have access to. We have A Wreath for Emmett Till by Marilyn Nelson, which I have access to on ebook, but not audiobook. And then two books that my library doesn't have whatsoever. They are Black Juice by Margot Lanigan. Margot Lanigan making a comeback? I know I've said that name before. I need to remember these. And then John Lennon, All I Want is the Truth, a photographic biography by Elizabeth Partridge, which I don't really know what to expect when it comes to that book. A graphic novel, nonfiction, pictures heavily involved. I don't know. I'm very intrigued as to how this like made its way into the Prince Honoré's list. 2005, the winner of the Prince Award was another one of my favorite books of all time, which is How I Live Now by Meg Rossoff. What can I say? I love this book. I have read it multiple times, five out of five stars. One of my absolute faves. It is so good. The honors for this year, I have access to the audiobook of Lizzie Bright and the Buckminster Boy by Gary D. Schmidt. Never heard of it before. Also never heard of the other two books, which I don't have access to on audio, but they are Chandra's Secrets by Alan Stratton and Airborne by Kenneth Oppel. Moving into 2004, the winner for the 2004 award was The First Part Last by Angela Johnson. This is the second book in the Heaven trilogy by Angela Johnson, so I would need to read Heaven first and then get to this one. My library has Heaven as an ebook and first part last as an audiobook. I don't know why. So I just like haven't gotten around to reading Heaven because I don't have an audiobook for it, but I really just need to read that book and then 
move on to this second book and read the whole series. Obviously haven't read these books, but I have read two other Angela Johnson books and I really liked both of them. I think she's a super underrated writer and so I just really think that I'm gonna like this series whenever I get around to it. And then I haven't read any of the honor books for this year. Two of them are available to me on audio. I do own one of them as well. It's Fat Kid Rules the World by K.L. Going. So I really should get to this one for sure. And then also A Northern Light by Jennifer Donnelly, which I have known about that book and I've had people who've liked that book and recommended it to me for a really long time now. I have never gotten around to it. And then the other two books I have access to as ebooks but not audio, and they are The Earth, My Butt, and Other Big Round Things by Carolyn Mackler, and Keisha's House by Helen Frost. Moving into 2003, the winner of the 2003 award was Postcards from No Man's Land by Aidan Chambers. My library has no copies of this book whatsoever, and I've never heard of it. But all three of the honored books I do have access to on audio. One of them I have already read. It is My Heartbeat by Garrett Fryman Wire. I gave this book 3.5 stars, I believe. It's a very different one, but I did really like that one. And then there's also The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer and Hole in My Life by Jack Gantos. The 2002 winner was A Step from Heaven by An Na, and I have read this author before, but not this book. I can get it on audio, so I should be reading this one sometime soon. My library also has an audiobook version of True Believer by Virginia Ewer Wolf, which is one of the honorees from this year, and I think this book is written in verse. The other three honorees from this year don't have access to an audio. There are ebook versions of The Rope Maker by Peter Dickinson and Free Will by Chris Lynch. And then my library doesn't have a copy at all of Heart to Heart by Jan Greenberg, which is a little bit of a bummer because this one does have like a subtitle. It is New Poems Inspired by 20th Century American Art which just sounds so cool, and I love that a poetry book was honored that year. The 2001 winner is a book that I do have access to on audio. It is Kit's Wilderness by David Almond. Unfortunately, all of the honorees from this year don't have access to an audiobook, but they are Many Stones by Carolyn Corman, The Body of Christopher Creed by Carol Plum Uchi, Stuck in Neutral by Terry Truman, and I haven't heard of any of those titles at all, so I don't know anything about them. And then the last one is a book that I actually have read already, and it is Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging by Louise Renison. I love this series when I was a kid. It is so funny, like tons of fun. I read this before Goodreads. Probably this is like a 3.5 star book, sort of in that range. It's been a long time since I read them, but they are just like really good fun. And then on to 2000, the very first year of the Prince Awards. So this was honoring books that were published in 1999. The winner is a book that I actually have read and it is Monster by Walter Dean Myers. I gave this book three stars. It's really interesting. This book is like written in script format. It didn't completely click with me, but I totally recognize that this is like a young adult classic. It is definitely a book that I think everyone should read. One of the honorees I have read, It Is Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. Another one that I read before Goodreads. I read this so long ago. I love this book. It is definitely due for a reread. This book is just fantastic. I would say say maybe when I read it, it would be like a four, maybe five stars. I don't know. It's been so long since I read this book, but it is incredible. I really need to reread this one. And then the other two honored books from that year, I do have access to on audio, so I'm hoping to get to them. And they are Skellig by David Almond. David Almond working his way in there for the very first two years of the Prince Award. And then Hard Love by Ellen Whitlinger. All right. So those are all of the books that have ever either won or been honored by the Michael L. Prince Award. I apologize profusely for the repetitive nature of me saying, I've been meaning to get to this book and this one is or isn't available to me on audiobook from my library. I think I probably said those phrases like 16 times at least in this video and I'm really sorry. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this. I just really enjoyed going through all these books, just getting excited about them. Like, 
you saw how many of these books I gave five out of five stars to. I'm just so ready to dive into all of the other honored books and winners of this award that I haven't read. I mean, maybe it won't be in the immediate future. I just feel like it will be because I just am feeling so excited about the, all these books. So someday I will have read every single Prince book. That's definitely a goal of mine. The ultimate goal of mine is to serve on the board of the Prince Committee. That would be like the dream. I really hope there are other Prince lovers out there. Make yourselves known. We can talk. Um, otherwise, tell me what literary awards you follow or if like there's one that you just like put above all the rest kind of like I do. I would be kind of interested to compare maybe like all the books I've read from different awards and see what my average rating is. If there's an award that has a clear cut higher average rating than other awards, maybe I'll do that in the future. I just don't think I'm well read enough for that to be useful because there are definitely plenty of awards where I've only read like maybe like one or two books from like the whole history of its existence. All right, but that's it. I'm rambling now. I just thought this would be fun to chit chat and look at all the Prince books throughout the years and just give a little shout out to my favorite book award. So that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Is the disru which is the disru the disru dis I cannot the disreputable history. <laughs>